Hey everyone, my name is Dr. Gayla Tia Strong. I'm a physical therapist who got 100% on the NPTE, and this led me to co-found SPT With Me, which is an online NPTE study platform. If you end up enjoying this video and feel it was beneficial, please feel free to check out our courses at sptwithme.com for our full NPTE studying experience designed to guide you towards acing your test. Now, onto what you're actually here for. Let's talk about postural plumb line assessment. Posture is a very important subject to be able to get down. Think about standing in line, you're sitting and watching TV, really just anything that makes us stationary in one position. Looking at the posture in that position can be very telling as to why a person might be complaining about their specific symptoms. If you're holding a barbell hunched over with a reversal of the lumbar lordotic curve for 10 minutes straight, it'd probably be pretty telling as to why a person might be having their back pain. I remember that when I was in school, we needed to be able to name all of the postural deviations that we saw in our classmates from head to toe within two minutes. Well, if we know how to point out the deviations, we must know what's considered ideal or normal. The postural plumb line provides us information as to what this ideal posture is. Now first, what is a plumb line? Taken out of the context of physical therapy, a plumb line is a cord that is suspended by a heavy piece of material like lead or metal. One of the purposes of its use can be to measure how deep water is. Great. But the other purpose that's actually related to what we can use it for as physical therapists is to compare the orientation of structures, or in this case, our body, from a vertical position. All this material knows how to do is go down with gravity. It's going to go straight up and down from the earth. Well, why can't you use a ruler or just a long stick instead? Well, you can, however, you just need to make sure that you measure the degree of the floor to make sure it's exactly zero. The idea is that you suspend this plumb line and you have a person walk just behind the plumb line with their shoulder pointed toward you. Again, given that the plumb line goes straight up and down as gravity does not have an angle, you can see a person's postural deviations from midline. There are certain landmarks that need to line up on that plumb line in order to have an ideal posture. Any of these landmarks seen either anterior or posterior to that plumb line will be considered a deviation. So these landmarks are the external auditory meatus, the chromioclavicular joint, sacral palmitory, greater trochanter, tibiofemoral joint, and calcaneocuboid joint. Of course, there are other landmarks and structures. You can even see it on this picture right here. They do need to be aligned with a plumb line. Uh, these can include the dens of the axis, the coronal suture of the skull. The only reason that I didn't list it in the beginning is, I mean, realistically, can you actually see where these structures are with the naked eye? Just some food for thought to make this concept a little more manageable. Considerations for the plumb line and its use in the clinic. Of course, I can't say everyone, but I would say that at least most people have some degree of a postural deficit. A person with a mild one or two degree deviation into anterior pelvic tilt, for instance, really you might not be able to notice upon visual examination. In this case, using something like the plumb line assessment alone might not be the most valuable tool for you to gather information to identify and address a patient's complaints. However, it can suggest that posture alone is not the patient's main impairment. The plumb line assessment might serve to be more valuable to you as your patient's postural deviations become more significant. From here, you can truly extract some information such as muscle length tension relationship imbalances, joint loading imbalances, strains or uh, compressions based on, or placed on the structures, excuse me. So postural assessment can be a very, very insightful tool. So just be aware and be knowledgeable about the landmarks of what is considered ideal and non-ideal posture. I really hope that this video was helpful to you. I'm hoping that we kind of put some concepts together, the plumb line, actual posture, seeing what we can extract from it. Hopefully it all, all makes sense. Again, I instruct the courses on sptwithme.com. We have more than six hours worth of content that is specifically designed to get you to pass and potentially ace your NPTE just like I did. 
Please leave comments below, questions, feedback, doesn't matter. Stay on the lookout for more videos by subscribing. Thank you. Lastly, here are some of the references.